to all the moms. Moms of children who are still at home or all grown up. Moms who've outlived a son or daughter. Or moms of babies they never got to hold. Moms who've raised kids all on their own or became a mom to someone who needed one. Moms of children who have wandered from God or the longing to be moms who are still waiting. God perfectly arranged each of you into the role you have today. His word recognizes you as capable, strong, and praiseworthy. Everything you do makes our lives more beautiful. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, Shepherd family, welcome back to worship. I'm John Carolis, our director of Digital Mission. And first of all, I want to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, whether you are a mom with kids of your own or you're simply like a mother in somebody's life. We are thankful for the people in our lives who are like moms to us. And if you haven't called your mom or sent a text, make sure you do that before you forget and it's too late. We have a great worship service for you today. We've got a message from our lead pastor, Scott Seidler, as he talks about what it means that we love God and we're included in his family through the picture of communion and that celebration of the sacrament, the Holy Supper that Jesus instituted with his disciples before his crucifixion. It's interesting that that falls on today, Mother's Day, because we're talking about families. And the way the Christian family expresses its relationship to one another is by eating together communion in worship, in worship settings like churches and sanctuaries. And as we think about what it means to be part of the Christian family, part of that whole process of communing with God, whether it be at communion, the Holy Supper, the sacrament, or simply through prayer and relationship to Him, one important thing for us to do is examine ourselves, to think about the ways in which we rely on God for His mercy and for His grace. Because truly none of us deserve to be part of the family of God, and yet He gracefully enters into our lives, and He fills the gaps between Him and ourselves. We recognize our failures, our imperfections, and we confess those things to God, trusting in the promise of forgiveness through faith in Jesus Christ. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, we know that His blood pays for the price of our sins. And so we can walk in light of that forgiveness, in the joy of our membership in the Christian family, whether we're a mom, dad, sibling, or anything else. Let's worship together this morning. My story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure's not to find me, cause that's what my father does. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does.
Hey Shepherd family, this is Pastor Scott Seidler. I bring to you grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. John chapters 13 through 17, the Gospel of John and the New Testament of Scripture are dedicated to the words, the conversations that Jesus had during his last meal with his disciples on earth. And these conversations were not something that happened in, in, in quick fashion. A typical Passover meal, which Jesus was celebrating there on that Jewish day of Passover, would be a long and protracted event. And there was lots of time for leisurely, albeit intense, conversation between him and his most trusted circle of followers. One of the things that I'm mindful of is that each of these words, these bits of conversation that Jesus had and John recorded, these are helpful for us in order to understand what it means to have Holy Communion with our God and Heavenly Father. And so as we read from John chapters 13 through 17, that's a constant question that I have is, is how do these words, how do these bits of conversation that Jesus has help me understand this reconciled relationship that I now have with God. In fact, maybe in the next week, just by way of a quick and early application point in this message, it might be helpful for you to read through John chapter 13 through 17 and decide, maybe pull out some golden nuggets by which your understanding of your relationship with God is uh, put in greater relief. Last week, we heard in our digital worship service, we heard about how we are the branches and Jesus is the vine. He gives us nourishing, life-giving hope and help so that we can function in this world in such a way that we, we produce great and good fruit. That's a, an indication that the relationship, restored relationship we have with God 
in spite of our sins, in spite of our failure points or disobedience or anything else that comes against us, that this relationship with God is to be a fruitful one. And that fruitfulness is something we can depend on because we have a vine, we have a source of nourishment that is trustworthy, true, consistent, and most of all, at heart, good. A few weeks ago, we heard about Jesus, who was, at least in John chapter 10, a good shepherd. He cares for the sheep, again, helping understand what this is for us, a holy communion, a re-communion with God. Today, we're going to go a little bit deeper in John chapter 15, beginning at verse 9. And what we're going to hear about is the way in which Jesus sows love in us so that we can sow love more broadly in this world, and most importantly, so that we can recognize and understand what holy communion with God is really all about. You know, as I was growing up, one of the things that I have in the back of my head is the parking lot at Peace Lutheran Church, the Lutheran church that I grew up in over the hill, up on top of the hill in my hometown of Morris, Illinois. And, and Peace Lutheran Church was a little straight building made out of brick. It was beautiful with yellow, uh, gold, mustard gold kinds of chairs that you sat in and green carpet. It was built in 1975. I mean, it, it's kind of old school. And, uh, and, and I always remember, though, walking out into the parking lot with my mom and my dad and my sister as we left church, and in one of the warm feelings of my childhood that I remember is the Holy Communion, the fellowship, the bond of the Spirit that I had with my family at that time as I left church, another kind of Holy Communion that helped make my family the Holy Communion that it was. Now, it could have been that I was, you know, five, seven, nine, ten years old, and I was just happy to be done with the hour worth of church. That's also possible. But I also recognize in those moments that there was something special, that, that something was more right about the world because of this restored, renewed relationship with God that I had just experienced, along with the people that loved me most and I loved most in this world. You know, John chapter 15 gets at that kind of holy communion love, that kind of fellowship. And I want you to listen in as I read for you these words from John 15 and see how they energize you to live a life of love, of reconciled love, not only with God, but with those around you, near and dear to you. Listen in now as I read from John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me, so remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love just as I obey my Father's commandments and reign, remain in His love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. And this is my commandment, love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for our friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends, since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command, love each other. How many times did Jesus invite us to love each other? To understand this love flows from a free heart, one that is no longer enslaved to fear, who has to love because, well, if we don't, God's going to get us, but rather a heart that is freed because we know that in spite of our failures, God loves us, and therefore, in spite of the failures of others, we can love them. Friends, as we think about these verses and as we think about Holy Communion, it is God's fervent hope for us that we can commune in a holy, sanctified, renewed, and restored way, not only with Him, but with others. This is the kind of renewed and restored love that makes the world go around. Now, the fact of the matter is, I am custom-made. 
custom made by my own choices not to love others as easily as God would want me. My corrupt heart, the sinful, evil wickedness of this world constrains me, coaches me to turn against others, to love myself more than I love my mom, my dad, my brothers, my sisters, my friends, my co-workers. The love that I have for myself causes me to be more inclined to lay down my life for myself than to be sacrificially bent toward helping others. If we are going to make a go of what Jesus is talking about here, if we are to rise and shine as God's people, it's going to take us being trained up like branches on a vine in order to produce good fruit, at the heart of which is a life of love lived for others. You know, in in the Lutheran church and in many congregations, um, we certainly know the Word of God. We read Scripture. That's an important piece of it. But there's also another part that is called the sacraments of the church. In some communions, it might be called the ordinances of the church. Um, Baptism, the Lord's Supper. If you live in the Catholic communion, if you're a Roman Catholic by background, you may have heard of ordination or marriage or uh, last rites. Those are sacraments of a different kind but they are ordinances, sacraments of a kind. Um, But in our Lutheran communion, in in the heart and soul of our shepherd family, um, the Lord's Supper and Holy Baptism are the two sacraments that we focus on most predominantly. And one of the things is that uh, here at Shepherd, in our uh, daily uh, and, and kind of analog community, we look forward every weekend to receiving the Lord's Supper. That's kind of a new practice here at Shepherd. We receive the Lord's Supper every service, every Sunday on all of our campuses. And one of the reasons why I'm excited about that is because it is so important for us, as believers in Jesus Christ, to stand stand or sit or kneel shoulder to shoulder with other believers and receive the body and blood of Christ, the bread and wine, as a memorial and token of what God has done through Jesus Christ for us. This very real presence of Jesus Christ in our midst, in in in-person worship, it, it tells us something, it does something, it achieves and accomplishes something that is spiritually significant. In the truest sense, it is a holy communion. You may be at a distance because of this digital format, but the same sentiment is still there for you. Even though you may not receive the official sacrament of the church, it's so important for us to be in a life, a rhythm, a ritual of holy communion with others knowing that those who stand shoulder to shoulder with us because of Christ, they are no longer slaves to sin or death or the fear of any of it. That because of Jesus Christ, they have the ability to love one another, just like you are called to love others. And that because of Jesus Christ, we have in us a new spirit by which we can lay down our lives for others, sacrifice in ways that others may think crazy to even consider, much less comprehend. You see, Holy Communion matters to Jesus. Holy Communion matters in the church. It's why even as you're watching this digital message, if you're not here in Scottsdale, if you're not able to connect with our shepherd family here in Scottsdale, Arizona, for you to hear my encouragement, go and find a church where the sacraments are celebrated where you can taste, literally taste with your taste buds, you can taste and see that the Lord is good. And that the Holy Communion that is at the center of the sacraments is the restored, reconciled relationship you can have with God. One that is freed from the slavery of fear or shame or guilt. A slavery that has been put away so that you can know your eternal life is secure in heaven. We read John chapters 13 through 17 so we can understand better what this holy communion with God is is all about. And today we see in John chapter 15, beginning at verse 9, a life, a holy communion freed from slavery, 
sacrificial in nature and characterized by a single word, love, attached to the command, love one another. Friends, if we can do that knowing that as branches attached to the vine, we have a Savior who has sacrificed himself, become a slave to our sin on our behalf, and has given his life to show the perfect love of God for us. We are Christ's one another. and He has given his life for us, for you. Amen. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts, your minds, in Christ Jesus, both now and forever. Amen. Hello, Shepherd family. This is Pastor Alan Rose now. I invite you to join me for a time of prayer. Lord Jesus, when we consider the full extent of your love for us, we are overwhelmed. By laying down your life for us and calling us your friends, you have shown us what true, selfless, unconditional love looks like. You died so that we may live. You took the punishment we deserve, and you graciously give us what we don't deserve, forgiveness, life, and salvation. As we receive those wonderful gifts through the simple, even tangible means of your word, baptism, and holy communion, empower us by your Holy Spirit to put such selfless love into practice in our daily living. Help us to see every human being as a person for whom you laid down your life. Then fill our hearts so full of your love that we may overflow with love toward others. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, both near and far, and for all people according to their needs. For those who suffer from illness or injury, we ask you to grant healing. For those who mourn the loss of loved ones, we ask you to give your holy comfort and peace. For those who battle addictions, we ask you to lead them to true serenity. For all who are troubled, lonely, desperate, or hurting, we ask you to meet their needs with your abiding presence and compassionate care. And in recognition of your amazing love for us, move us to reach out with hearts of love to meet the needs of those for whom we pray that we might be your hands and feet in the world today. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. It's your breath. 
Thank you for joining us for worship this week. As you go about your week now, having heard about the love of Christ that's been poured out into your hearts, let that love overflow into the world around you, into the relationships that you have with the people around you, whether that be your family or friends or people you don't even know. And let your steps be guided by God. Let his spirit rest upon you and let you live in the joy of Christ. Amen. Yes. Yes. Mrs. Marmaduke. Yeah, Pastor Jake. I just opened up Facebook Mm -hmm. and I now have 1,000 friends on Facebook. 1,000 friends? friends. Yes. You really have a thousand friends. I mean, it just said that somebody accepted my friend request. So now I have 1,000 friends. And... They are all your friends. You know yeah. every single one of them. Yeah, absolutely. I know and their name. I know when their birthday is. I know what TV shows they like. Uh, I, I see their pictures that they post. But, They're my friends. But Pastor Jake, are they your true friends? Are they well, yeah. the group of friends that you go to when you have a problem or well, you you celebrate the celebrations. I mean, I say happy birthday on their Facebook wall. Yeah. That means we're real friends, right? Yeah. Oh, Pastor Jake, I, mm, I'm going to have to disagree. Yes, okay. they're your friends, but they're not your, your true friends. Okay. Not you. Some of them might be though, right? Yes, I some mean, of them might, might be, but yeah. f- a friend is someone who you can trust. Okay. A friend is somebody... When you're there, they are there. Yeah. They lift you up when you are down. Yeah. They're, um, they're so you're talking more like in person, face to face friend, like somebody that I might see on a re- more regular basis. On a more regular basis. Yeah. Something, okay. Someone that you can have conversations with. Someone that gets you. Someone that completes you. Kind of like, you know, like salt and pepper mm-hmm. or peanut butter and jelly. Okay. They go together. Okay. Yeah. That I see what you're saying. I mean... I feel like my Facebook friends are important. Mm -hmm. I feel like I care about them, Mm -hmm. but maybe my friends are people that are going to be willing to be more than just Facebook friends. They're going to be more than just online. Yes. They're going to be there for me when things are difficult or when I'm sad or when I need to talk. Is that kind of what you're saying? It is. Okay. So, I mean, while it's nice to have all those friends on your social media accounts, Mm -hmm. who are those true friends, that that group of friends that you can count by name, that you could gather with, that you could tell anything to. Mm -hmm. Um, Who are those friends? Yeah. That's that's the true. That's the true friend. I I understand what you're saying. I still I still feel really I feel really happy about my thousand Facebook friends. But as you were kind of sharing that with me, I also thought about how Jesus tells us Mm -hmm. about what it means to be a friend and how he is our friend, yes, but he's also our savior. And so I kind of want to read this passage that I just was reminded of. It's from John chapter 15. And Jesus says this, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. And Jesus did just that for us, right? He was so much of a friend to us that he laid down his very life for us. He died for us on the cross. And, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I am not sure how many of my Facebook friends would do that for me, right? right? They might say happy birthday on my Facebook wall. Uh, They might like my posts. They might even say some nice words to me on social media, Mm -hmm. but I don't think they would probably give up their life for me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Jesus is a perfect example for us of what it means to be a true friend like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I think that we can look to Jesus always as our number one friend. What do you think? That is so true. Jesus is always there for us. He Mm -hmm. is our best friend, always there for us. He listens to us. We can talk to him anytime we want. Yeah. And just like your true group of friends... They're there. They're there and they will listen Mm -hmm. and you can talk to them anytime. Yeah. And uh, they're always there for you. And it's so important to have those true friends. Yeah. Well, and I feel like 
what you're doing right now, mm -hmm. that probably has something to do with friendship. It right? does. I am yeah. making some friendship bracelets okay. for my good friends that have helped me out this past week. And I just want to show them that I care about them. And yeah. they're so important and special to me. So I made some bracelets and guess what, Pastor Jake? What's that? I made a bracelet for you too. Wow, because I, I'm your friend? You are my friend. That's awesome. You are my friend. Very I cool. see you every day mm -hmm. and I enjoy talking with you and Thank you. Um, always showing up at the preschool and just being there when yeah. you need somebody. So well, this I appreciate, is for you. Yeah, I we'll appreciate this out. very much. And I also appreciate all the work that you do to care for the children of Shepherd, also to care for the children at the preschool and all the fun activities that you help us with at Shepherd as well. So you're my Thank friend you. too, basically is what I'm trying to say. Thank you, Pastor um, Jake. And boys and girls, on this Mother's Day, as we celebrate some of the best friends of all in our lives, mothers and mother figures, mm -hmm. we wanna say a special happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers that are joining us this weekend, both for on-campus worship and digital worship as well. And I thank you for being a mother as well, Mrs. Marmaduke, thank mother you. figure to so many. Thank you. And uh, do you want to say any special words to I moms do. out there today? I just want to say happy Mother's Day to all the wonderful, beautiful moms out there. You are so, so special. So with that, boys and girls, let's fold our hands, let's bow our heads, and let's say a special prayer for Mother's Day and for friends. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the mothers, all the mother figures, all the people in our lives that love us on this Mother's Day. We thank you for their love in our lives. We thank you for all that they do for us to help us in our lives on this earth. And Lord God, we thank you as well for Jesus coming to be our ultimate friend on this earth, giving his very life for us that we might have salvation and grace and we pray, Lord God, that you would remind us that in the midst of Facebook friends and social media and all sorts of friends on this earth, that the best friends are the ones who stick with us through the most difficult times of our life. And the best friend that we have is Jesus. We pray this all in his name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Bye, everybody. We'll see you later. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day.